Hello, I'm Jonah with Magnanimous Media, and this is the Canon C300. The C300 has a single CMOS Super 35mm size sensor, delivering an HD image with 12 stops of dynamic range in 422 color space at 50 megabits per second. The C300 utilizes the bear pattern on its sensor, like RED cameras, the Arri Alexa, 5D, and many others, but unlike those cameras, the C300 has no need for debayering. There are two green, one red, and one blue photo sight per pixel. The result is a crisper image and less noise in low light conditions. The C300 is a great documentary camera, but can also be applied to commercial, broadcast, or any cinematic application. The reason it's a good documentary camera is a combination of low light performance, form factor, and features such as waveform and vector scope. With documentary work, you don't often have the lighting conditions desired to craft the image, but with the low light performance as well as built-in ND, you can get better results and more room to craft your image. The C300 is extremely versatile, has an intuitive build, and it's pretty lightweight. It has a similar form factor to DSLRs, but it's more substantial, so you'll be able to hold on to it a little bit better as opposed to a 5D, which you might be concerned about dropping. Now, even with 4K cameras becoming more and more prevalent, there are still a multitude of films that are shot in 2K and HD, and even more cinematic applications that have HD delivery. For indie films and HD delivery, this camera is the way to go if you want to keep your cost and data expenditures down when compared to raw 4K workflow, which becomes a little ridiculous when you're shooting for HD delivery. The 422 color space and high data rate give you quite a bit of wiggle room in grading and post, and also make this a great camera for chroma keying such as green screen or blue screen. And those things also make it a good broadcast solution. Among the many notable features of the C300 are its gamma modes. Normal one is typical contrast and saturation intended for a TV monitoring. Normal two is similar, but the highlights are gonna be brighter. Normal three expands the tones in the shadow from normal two. Normal four is similar to three, but retains more detail in the shadows. Cine one is meant to simulate film with a crisp and vivid image. Cine two is similar, but with less contrast. C8 is Canon Log or C-Log, which is flat and retains maximum detail for footage that is intended to be color graded. C9 is EOS Standard, which emulates the standard picture style of Canon's EOS HD SLRs such as the 5D, 60D, and 7D. The C300's native ISO is 850 with a native white balance of 5600 degrees Kelvin or daylight. Uh, so when you're at ISO 850, it's going to put your mid-tone, your neutral gray, right in the middle of the 12 stops dynamic range. So you'll have six stops headroom in your highlights and six stops in your shadows. Included with the C300 is the C300 body, the proprietary shoe mount monitor, shoe mount grip, one 64 gigabyte CF card, two batteries, battery charger, AC adapter, and hand grip. Canon provides XF plugins for Final Cut and Avid Media access, as well as XF utilities and loot setting downloads on their website. Be sure to check these downloads out and make sure your system is going to work with the C300 footage before you rent it. In order to utilize audio inputs and control, as well as functions like waveform and vector scope, you'll need to attach the proprietary monitor unit. The monitor can be attached in a number of ways, with or without the hand grip attached. The hand grip attaches by inserting it into the shoe mount and threading in the quarter inch bolt. The monitor is attached by sliding it into the desired shoe mount and securing it firmly. Be sure to attach the cable labeled 1 to EX1 and the cable labeled 2 to EX2. The monitor can swivel, flip, and give you options for placement. The battery, which provides up to four hours of shooting time, depending on power demands, is inserted by releasing the battery door inserting the battery with the contact points facing to the left side and then sliding it right to left until it snaps into place. The C300 can also be powered by the DC adapter simply by connecting the adapter to the camera via its DC port. The camera is powered up via the switch on the left side and you can select between media and camera mode. Selecting the lock mode will lock out any setting changes but allow you to record. When powered up, the C300 will go directly to the main display. The main menu is accessed by pressing the menu button on the rear of the camera or on the monitor unit. You can toggle the menu options using the select dial on the left side of the camera 
or the joystick on the rear of the camera, the monitor attachment, or the grip. Make selections by pressing the joystick or pressing the button in the center of the select dial. The C300 utilizes up to two compact flashcards at a time, providing over 2.5 hours of full quality recording per 64 gig card, giving you a total of over five hours of recording time. The cards are inserted by releasing the CF door and inserting the card. To format the card, go to the other category in the main menu and select Initialize Media. Then select the desired slot and select OK. The CF card in use can be switched via the Slot Select button next to the CF card slots. The C300 can also store metadata to an SD card via the slot in the rear left side of the camera body. This C300 is an EF mount so it works with Canon glass such as the L-Series EOS lenses, or an adapter can be utilized for other lens mounts such as PL mount. To attach the lens, like all Canon cameras, you depress the lens release button and turn the cover counterclockwise. Place the lens by lining up the red dots, then turn the lens clockwise. On the monitor unit, you'll find audio controls for the two inputs. The three-pin XLR inputs are found on the right side of the monitor unit. To adjust audio settings, go to Audio Setup in the main menu. Settings such as ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and aperture are displayed in the lower left corner of the monitor and viewfinder, as well as displayed on the rear of the camera body under the viewfinder. If you are using EF lenses, you can adjust the aperture using the lower control knob on the camera body or the control dial on the grip unit. Accessing settings like white balance, shutter speed, and ISO is done by pressing the function button until the desired setting is highlighted. Then use the joystick or select dial to toggle the setting. White balance can be set to daylight, tungsten, preset A, preset B, and degrees Kelvin. To set the preset, simply set to A or B, press the white balance button while aimed at a white card. To set degrees Kelvin, select the setting using the function button, then press the white balance button and use the select dial or joystick to dial in the desired setting. ISO or gain selections and increments, iris increments and zoom compensation, and shutter mode and increment can be adjusted in the main menu under camera setup. Image control, exposure assist, and focus assist can be activated and deactivated from the left side of the camera body. The C300 has magnification, peaking, zebra, waveform, and vector scope. Settings for zebra and peaking can be found in the main menu under LCD slash viewfinder setup. Viewing options for the waveform monitor can be found under the other functions submenu. Magnification can also be activated on the grip unit. The numbered buttons on the side of the camera, the monitor, and grip unit can be customized in the main menu under other functions and assign button. Neutral density filters can be toggled via the controls on the front left side of the camera. The C300 has 0 0.6, 0 0.2, and 0.8 neutral density, which provides two, four, and six stops of light reduction. All current settings can be viewed by pressing the status button and using the select dial or joystick to toggle through the displays. Exit this view by pressing status again. The start, stop, or record button is located on the left rear and front right of the camera body, as well as on the monitor unit and grip unit. Like many professional cameras, you can set up custom picture profiles with the C300 via the custom picture button on the left side of the body. And within these settings are those gamma modes that I talked about earlier. Now, you want to carefully consider your image, what you want to do with the image, and what your post workflow is before you deploy any of these gamma settings. Settings such as data rate, resolution, and time base are found in the other functions category of the main menu. True 24p, high speed, pre-record, and interval record can be set and activated in this menu. The C300 can shoot up to 60 frames per second in 720p. Be sure that you set the desired time base under frame rate. Activate slow and fast motion, then set the desired frame rate under slow and fast motion. The C300 can output HD and SD video via its SDI and HDMI ports on the rear of the camera. The C300 also has sync out, gen lock, and timecode BNC ports in addition to the 3.5 millimeter headphone output and 3.5 millimeter mic input. 
So that's the basic setup for the Canon C300. It's certainly a great camera, it has many applications, and it'll give you a great image without breaking your post-production budget. Stay tuned for new videos, and check out our other videos at magnanimous.biz. Thank you.